Vegas Radio Show for Saturday, February the 8th. And now we begin with what we call our preamble ramble. Good morning. How's everybody today? Good. Hey, before we get the show started, let me go over one little minor thing. Last week during the big freeze, some pipes broke here. And they're in this area right here, and the whole store flooded. And Andy and Donna have done, I can't thank them enough for the last two weeks of them doing this. Get this thing back on track, okay? Now, you might notice the carpet was new for the last show, but now it might be sticking to your feet. <laughs> so just, just kind of be cognizant of that. But the good thing is we'll have many more pieces of carpet wrap <laughs> along as the months go on. That's right. So just, there's still a little clutter around, so be careful. The back we've had to close off because it's not quite uh, already yet. But I believe that by the next show, the back will be ready, and the Hillbilly Museum will be a grand opening. Is that right, George? Yeah. So, with all that said, we welcome you all, and we hope you all are here to have a good time, because we're here to have a great time, all right? Yeah. Mr. William Covington right here is going to help us with some things. And, yeah, okay. and for those that have been here, you know this sign right here. Please do it when you see it. Clap. Let's do that one more time. We can get more involved than that. Ready? Clap. That's, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. That's robust. Now, let's go over a few things. You're going to find the exit. That would be at the front end of the building where you come in at. That's very easy. Okay. <laughs> one exit. Interest exit. You'll find a cold drink machine up there. Yes. Now, there are cameras located all through this hardware store. We have one here and one here. We've got one over there. One more thing. This area here, from here back to where George is, we like to try to keep that open so they can come in and out to re, re uh, do the sound if we need to. Sounds so good. So we could be cognizant of that. We'd like to keep that, keep that area open. All right. But be cognizant of those cameras because we are filming. We are broadcasting worldwide as well. William, what about uh, cell phones? Oh, that's right. Yeah. We need to take our cell phones and put them in silence or shut mine off totally. Yeah, shut yours off. You're a culprit. All right. Now, William, the comfort areas. It would be to my, to my right down this aisle. And one's labeled? One, one is labeled men's. And the other? Employees only. So ladies, use your discretion. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now remember, the popcorn is always fresh and That's free. That's correct. And right over here. I see a lot of them already have it. All right, William, the last thing? The last thing is to welcome... Wait, no, wait a minute, wait. In case of a flood. Oh. You've all heard this before, and we had a flood, yeah. okay? So in case of a flood, do not use your chair as a personal flotation. Okay? Just run out the door. Now, now, with all that said, the host of the show, George Hamilton the fifth. And the big man is very pretty for That's me. How are y'all doing today? So much fun. I'll tell you what. It's one of those beautiful days. We got so many special guests. We have a very special occasion we're celebrating. What am I supposed to ask you? We also have the Heavenly Choir. So now Heavenly Choir, come on out. And we'll start the show in our traditional and primitive way. Heavenly Choir! <laughs> If we should have some feedback during this song, I'll go and correct it. <laughs> Radio! Radio! Live from this historic handy hardware in beautiful downtown Franklin, Tennessee. Can you say Viva Nash Vegas? Viva Nash Vegas! So much fun. Okay, so are you having fun yet? I can't hear you. All right. Well, I think it's time for me to get off the stage and introduce our first special guest today because we're really, really excited. We got a very, very big show. I know you're waiting for these people. These guys are just fantastic. 
from all points of the earth, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only, Riders in the Sky! Six years we've been together, wow. aging like fine cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and we call two slams. How to be a player? Thank you, Doug. We've played in, we've played in feed and seeds. We've played in bookstores. We've played in a lot of Western clothing stores. This is the first time for a hardware store. <laughs> <laughs> and it was on our bucket list. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and here you can get a bucket. <laughs> Everything you need right here at Handy Hardware. We got we got left hand nails, we've got right hand nails all here at Handy Hardware. Come on down. Completely unsolicited. To my right, star of the forthcoming motion picture, Oh Brother, Where Am I? That's Woody Paul, the king of the cowboy fiddler. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Keep your seats, keep your seats, that's okay. To his right, the man who has introduced twerking into Western music. <laughs> Joey the Cow Polka King. <laughs> He's the man who's been solicited many, many times. The idol of American youth, Ranger <laughs> Duck. When you hear a cowboy yodel in the song of open range, your heart leaps up to hear his stirring tale. Well, did you ever wonder at the end of his refrain? Why his voice leaves an immortal way? Well, the story as was told to me was handed down through history of a singing cowboy brave enough to try. To ride the meanest old guy, use it, bucked him off right to shoot, and left him spinning way up in the sky. The Bronco jumped around. It made a deep impression, you could 
Ride side saddle. <laughs> well, that had a slow development, didn't it? Got back there to the damp wood dough and kind of died out there. Great to be at the Handy Hardware here, Ranger. It is, and I can't think of a better thing to do on a Saturday afternoon than wow Wahoo! One, two, one, two, three. Can I get a big wahoo? <laughs> Great big horse and give me a buckaroo and let me wahoo, wahoo, wahoo. Give me ranch, a big car pants, and give me a stetson too and let me wahoo, wahoo, wahoo. Give me those wide open spaces. This like a prairie flower, growing wilder in the arms. Give me a moon, a prairie moon, give me a gal that's true and let me wahoo, wahoo, wahoo. What did Cleopatra say to Antony when they met? She hollered, Wahoo, Wahoo, Wahoo. What did Roman Romeo yell to Miss Juliet? Wahoo, Wahoo, Wahoo. It started way back in Eden. Miss Eve was the cause, and it's no fib. She wahooed Adam for a rib. What did Pope Hunters yell the minute she saw John Smith? Wahoo. Stand around six foot two, they usually Give me a while from the gold. Hey, I want to be a cowboy too, so I can ride the whole day through. I'll get the length and size and strength of my darling sweet Roberta too. And let me wahoo, wahoo, wahoo. I'm going to go to the old house bed. on that thing, Slim. Woo! Harder, Slim. Now you get open in the mouth of my two feet, five, ten, eight, four, four, two. Wahoo, wahoo, wahoo. And then you wiggle your toes and grit your teeth like dangerous and the groove. And then you wahoo, wahoo. Wow. Be careful not to sing. Hey, I'm not a good 
good hidey hidey ho. Go to that no more in Idaho. Well, buck your belt and fix your hand and spit her out. County home of Woody Paul. Yes! Yes! Recently inducted into the National Fiddler Hall of Fame. Yes! In the living category. <laughs> I think we need a, a little medley of fiddle tunes. Great idea, Ranger. We're going to do some fiddle tunes here today, boys. Wait a we'll minute. get George to bring over here the old dancing board. We might do a little dancing shit. Which the dancing goes really good on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like awfully good plywood, probably available here at Handy Hardware. Yes. <laughs> Y'all have plywood here at Handy Hardware? We got it all. They got it all. They heard it here. They've got it all. You want to dance in? They've got left hand plywood. You got to plywood. get it just right, and you just got to flip it over. That's right. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. We even got smoke torches. Woody Paul, born and raised on Highway 96 over in Triune, Tennessee. <laughs> and lots more. I'm going to have a rise in the sky. Oh, don't leave yet. Wait, come back to us, Lev, and read your letter. Come on back for a second. Now, they're here because they're members of the Grand Ole Opry yes. and legendary, and of course, Woody Powell's been here before. He said we've got to get the entire crew over here to the show. So 
But everybody is here today to celebrate a very special day. On February the 6th, 1960, George Hamilton IV became a member of the Grand Ole Opry. So this is something. Yeah. 54 anniversary. Come on out here, George. How about riders in the sky? Right there. It's been a wonderful 54 years, and uh, one of the things that uh, has not happened in all these years is I haven't had the pleasure of singing Abilene with some real cowboys. Do you mean you're going to sing with the riders in this guy? Yeah. So you might become an honorary, honorary buckaroo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. All right. <laughs> I'd like that very much. That was... 1956, believe it or not, a long time ago when I was... Uh... Would you like to talk to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> it scares me to look at that. <laughs> um, I had forgotten that it was in the garage out uh, where we live, and George V came over and picked it up the other day and uh, came walking through the house with it, and I thought it was me he was carrying. <laughs> we haven't talked about uh, picking and grinning together, but I think, I'm sure y'all know Abilene. Do y'all ever we do it for you? Yes, we, we do. Many yeah. times. And we do it at the Hugh G, which is a All right. <laughs> <laughs> y'all want to do any first? <coughs> yeah, we can do it. Yeah. You want to come in and play with us? Yeah, come on, George. Yeah, George. You want me to be an honorary buckaroo, too? Boy, this show is time to the minute, isn't it? <laughs> this is tightly rehearsed professional show business here at the Handy Hut. And I'm glad to see you. That's right. Okay. There we go. Abilene. Abilene. Out there, don't treat you mean and ever leave. I believe I sit alone most every night, watch those trains fly Don't I wish they were carrying me back to Abilene? I believe you know that chorus. So many distinguished visitors, but one from the state senate of the state of Tennessee. The one and only Senator Jack Johnson. Wow, 
Oh, this is a lot like state government works, really. Uh, <laughs> well, what a thrill and a pleasure it is to be here. And for those of you who aren't from Williamson County, welcome. It's a great to have you here, and it's certainly such a pleasure to have Brenda Lee, Riders in the Sky, and, and obviously George Hamilton the fourth here. Let's have a hand for If it's your first time in this hardware store, isn't this special? This is such a great business to have right here in downtown. Uh, well, I have the honor of representing Williamson County in the State Senate. It's the 23rd Senatorial District, and it's an incredible honor. And those of you who uh, are from Williamson County, thank you for that tremendous honor, even if you didn't vote for me. I'm so grateful. <laughs> but uh, one of the perks of getting to serve in the General Assembly is to get to honor people, special people who do special things. And I've had the opportunity to do that on a no number of occasions. I got to honor Riders in the Sky here a couple of years ago, and that was a, that was a real treat to get to do that. But I'm proud to be here today to honor someone that I've been a fan of ever since I can remember and first listened to a note of country music, and that's George Hamilton IV. And for his contribution, not only to country music, but to civic endeavors, charitable endeavors, what an incredible career. He's a very, very special gentleman. We're very proud to have him here today. And we, uh, we actually presented a proclamation to him that I sponsored in the State Senate not long ago, but I'm going to represent it to him today, and I hope that's okay. So congratulations on 54 years. Member of the Grand Ole Opry to George Hamilton IV. Thank you. We want to get a picture of Andy Willoughby, of this correct Handy Hardware, George IV, and Jack Johnson. And me. <laughs> We're really excited because there are, as I mentioned, so many guests here today. At this point right now, I'm going to ask Michael Kelsch. Michael Kelsch, let me ask you a question. David Spaulding, say something. Well, I'm going to say something. Hi, William. How you doing? I'm good. George is up to something. Isn't that great about Mr. Hamilton? Yes, it really was. That, 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 yes, that's oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, we had a little bit of a spat earlier this week, me and David Spaulding Jr. Sometimes we fight like childhood friends. And we're kind of like childhood friends. We're living our second childhood here at Historic Handy Hardware. But now I'm going to introduce him because sometimes he gets a little nervous about this honor. But I like to think of him as a man of constant leisure. He is a man of constant leisure. George, you know what that means to me? What? Middle-aged, middle-class, and broke. <laughs> Oh, no. He is a man of translation. Now it's time to ask William Covington. William Covington, if you were to give Brenda Lee directions on how to get here from Starbucks in downtown Franklin, how would you tell her to do that? This is what we call, we call it CPS, I guess, Global Positioning Services. That's the car thing, and we have Covington Positioning Services. I will tell her to leave Starbucks, hit south, and the fifth property on the left. <laughs> you know, what's so easy about Handy Hardware, there's a beacon that seems to shine out because, ladies and gentlemen, Elvis may have left the building, but he has not left Handy Hardware. Now we introduce you to the one and only Elvis on a Bobcat. <laughs> well, it's time for the show to move on, as you can imagine. At this point, I'd like to have someone very, very special come out, who toured with George IV many years ago. George, come on back up here, if you will, and maybe you can sort of introduce us to this special, special surprise. Before you do that, I'm gonna read you this proclamation. This is from the Grand Old Opry. It says, Dear George, on behalf of the staff and members, congratulations, on your 54th anniversary as a member of the Grand Ole Opry. Since joining our Opry family on February 6, 1960, you've traveled the world, earning the title International Ambassador of Country Music, the International Ambassador of Country Music. <laughs> From Billboard Magazine, they're the ones who proclaimed you that, and 
All along the way, you've also been a wonderful Opry ambassador. Many thanks from all of us at the Grand Ole Opry. Sincerely, Pete Fisher, Grand Ole Opry Vice President and General Manager. That's really nice. Thank, thanks to Mr. Fisher. He's a, a wonderful uh, boss man. And uh, he's always uh, been very fair to all the Opry members, whether they're senior members like myself or new guys with hit, hit records and all. I had to smile a little bit when he read that, uh, referring to me as the international ambassador of country music. I was in Liverpool, England a while back, and I think I've told this story on here before, but it's still uh, relevant and current. Uh, the guy who was supposed to introduce me on the show over there had never heard of me. And uh, he, uh, he was a BBC guy, and he asked one of the boys in the band, he said, uh, how do you introduce this dude? I don't know anything about him. And the, uh, one of the boys in the band said, well, you know, some people call him the international ambassador of country music. And uh, so I'm waiting in the wings to go on, and this guy, this nervous DJ, I heard him introduce me. He said, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, a nice warm welcome for the Ember National Imbecile of Country Music. <laughs> <laughs> it really happens. Oh, yeah. When I talking about touring all over the world, when you started back in the days when you looked like this statue behind David Spalding Jr., there was someone very special that you toured with, and she came all the way down to see you today. Here she is, Little Miss Dynamite, yes, Brenda Lee. Yeah. pleased to uh, be with you on this momentous day. Um, George and I performed together the first time, um, what year was it in the 50s? Probably about 1957 or 8, 57 or 8 probably. Uh, George had out, uh, I believe it was the number one record uh, called A Rose and a Baby Ruth. Yeah. And, uh, yes it was. And we were reminiscing about it, and um, on the bill was Mickey and Sylvia, who had the song called Love is Strange. We all know that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> George, myself, and little Richard. That's right. And, and we, we all went outside because they said little Richard was going to come in a limo, uh, which we didn't have and um, not only did he have a limo but when he got out of the car what you think it was his manager yeah I think his manager had the uh, red car tell him, tell him what he well Brenda and I were standing out on the on the uh, loading dock <laughs> uh, waiting to <laughs> Thank you, George. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were waiting to see the king of rock and roll at that time. Absolutely. And by the way, when Elvis started, most of the songs he sang on shows were Little Richard songs before, well, yeah, before he had hits. Before he had hits, yeah. Little Richard was um, one of his big influences, as Little Richard was to people like the Beatles yeah. and a lot of, of course, you, like you said, you traveled internationally. Um, as I did, and a lot of our group, groups like the Everly Brothers, uh, uh, Fats Domino, Little Richard, they inspired the English groups That's with right. their harmony and everything. And but Bob, get onto that carpet. Well, anyway, the manager rolled this red carpet out, and the limousine door opened, and Little Richard stepped out and walked into the stage area on a red carpet. Yeah. He did. I, I mean, really, it was over the top. <laughs> that was sweet of you to, to get down on your knees to me, George. Thank you so much. And you know what? I, I, if I got down on my knees, I couldn't get back up. <laughs> you know how that is, ladies, right? But uh, I, I was just thinking, uh, when that happened, 1956 or 57, somewhere in there, you were just a teenager. You were a you're a lot younger than me, so I guess you were just a. Well, if it was if it was in 1958, I was let's see, I was 13. 
going to be 14. Yep. So now you know how old I am. But this is, this is so wonderful, and may I just say, folks, that uh, in life, uh, you meet a lot of people. But seldom do you meet what I call real folks. And this, if, if somebody said, name the top ten nicest people that you've ever met and worked with, George would be number one. I love you too. And hey, your son is creeping up on you. So he, he's going to get there. And thank all of you all for coming out here today. And this is so fun. My grandson Charlie is here. And I think uh, that I owe a lot of money uh, uh, before I can leave this store Be because he's picked out locks and keys. And a while ago, he came back and he said, Nana, could I have a hatchet? <laughs> I said, I don't think so. But anyway, he is loving this. And thank all of y'all for being so sweet and gracious this morning. And hallelujah, the weather wasn't so bad that we all couldn't go. God bless you, and thank you so much. Good morning, Emily. You're probably wondering now, what's the question? I was just going to mention, she said some very nice things about me, which I really appreciate, don't deserve, but I appreciate. And uh, I wanted to make clear that Brenda Lee was probably the first international ambassador of music because she was going to Japan and to Europe long before me or Jim Reeves or any of us. She was the first Nashville artist I know who uh, traveled the world singing and making friends for our music. And I love you, Brenda. You're a gracious Southern lady and a wonderful person. Thank you for coming. Wow. Well, it's so great to have, I'd say there's at least a thousand people here today. <laughs> and each one of you, I can come back to the next show two weeks from now, when we'll have pieces of the carpet that you're actually standing and sitting on right now for you to carry home with you. Maybe you can even decorate your house or your, your barn or whatever. But what could be more special on an anniversary than a visit from the cake lady. Cake lady, come on out here. Thank you, George. Am I cake lady Annabelle today or just the cake lady? Well, you could be cake lady Annabelle. Okay, I left my hoop skirt in the car, but. Um, Mr. Hamilton, could you come back out here for a minute, please? Yes. <clears throat> I think pretty much everyone here signed this card if they didn't. I've got pen and you can sign it later on. But this is a well-wishing card for the country troubadour. Well, thank you. And I've made brownies and we've got an Italian cake. We're going to pass it around. And we love you and we're so happy. And thank you for bringing George into the world and being so very patient. <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice of your cake, lady. And are these gluten-free? <laughs> I wish I could say they were, but they're not. Mm. Just eat a little bit. Just eat a little bit. Okay. Can David Spalding have some too? Oh, absolutely, David Spalding can have some. David Spalding, I think, probably already had some. No one yeah, I've worked on it. I already have. <laughs> do you want to buy it before we pass them out? No, no, no. Sure. Okay. David, do you have anything to say before Cake Lady starts moving this way? I know that cake is good. Oh, yeah. She makes us cakes all the time. She. I guess basically she feeds the demon out of this radio show. Basically, yeah. If it's not free popcorn, it is free cake. It's free cake from the cake party. Which is a wonderful thing. We have some more special things getting ready to happen. We've got a lot. I can of see things. there may not be enough cake for everybody, but don't worry, because here comes even more cake. Yeah. Are, you, are you a cake lady? Uh, I'm a cake deliverer. We like to cake eat well. Deliverer. All right, so we're going to cut the cake up. Carol Ann, come on out here, and do you have anything to add to this? Why don't we sing happy anniversary to George the Fourth? Happy anniversary, George the Fourth. Okay, here we go. Ready? What key? Anything. Here we go. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Kind gentlemen. Happy anniversary, George the Fourth. Happy anniversary to you. What's going on, ladies?
Can I mention something? What is he? Um, as far as George V is concerned, he wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the mother of George V yes. and the wife of George the Fourth <laughs> and the grandmother of George the Sixth. I love her very much and I'm deeply grateful because if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't have uh, three wonderful kids and a whole bunch of grandchildren. Tink, would you just take a bow? I know you don't like to do all this. But... <laughs> She doesn't like to make speeches. <laughs> the one and only. All right. A big hand for Tink Hamilton. Bye bye. And the young brother, Andy Lucas. You know, this is a special time of our show because Andy and Donna are out there guarding the door. But we always like to bring them up here to. I wonder who can take their place while you come up here to tell us what may be on special. Oh, look at this. William has got a diamond necklace. Is anyone misplaced this item? Austin Tubbs. While this is going on, we want to remind you, believe it or not, Ernest Tubbs' 100th birthday, I guess, is either been or is coming up. They're doing a special for him tomorrow down at the Tennessee State Museum. Sunday, it'll be about somewhere in the area of three, but they'll be discussing 100 years of Ernest Tubb, the Texas Troubadour. How about a hand for Ernest Tubb? Yes. Oh, that's been oh, there for years, yeah. Yes. I, he almost got lost in the flood. Let's put it on George. Okay, well now, ladies and gentlemen, one of our favorite parts of the show, have you got that sound ready? We like to call this... Hey Andy! What's on sale? Andy and Donna from Handy Hardware. Sailing blue this month. Um, as supplies are last. George now, and saw blades too. Now, George, you know you're always messing with me about making people mad. Well, I you know, I've, wait a minute. You, let's talk about that for a minute because you know sometimes when other people get mad, Andy gets mad. Yes. Oh, he gets mad. Is anybody mad today? Well, I think I, I made a few people mad because we had to kind of. Cut people off from coming in the store. I can see like 500 people out yeah, there. Yeah, we got a bunch of people waiting to get in. Let's all turn around and wave at them. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but unfortunately, we, we were less 5,000 square foot this week because of the water damage, and so that's the reason you know we have an exit back there. So we had to cut people off. So I apologize for anybody that's got family waiting out there. But Who's as soon as mean? people, oh, I know, I know, everybody, yeah, you know, it's, it's okay though. It's a good thing. <coughs> And I think Donald's got Okay, so you're not mad. No, I'm not mad. I think this is They're great. Mad. we got all kinds of people here today. People I haven't seen before. And that's, that's good, too. That's good, too. But repeat people, too. And you're wearing what looks like a handy hardware t-shirt. We got them on sale. 15 <clears throat> bucks at the front door. I mean. Yeah. 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 Historic. Yeah. <coughs> Historic handy hardware that's in beautiful right. downtown Franklin, Tennessee. What other things have you got? Donna? I, I, I have... Um, Handy hardware t-shirts, this one's a small, and if you are small, you better get them because we only ordered a few and there's like one or two left. But um, Andy is, has graciously agreed to model today, so if you wouldn't turn around. If you'd like to give them as a gift, we have them in mason jars too for $5 more. $15, $20. Um, and we really do appreciate y'all coming here today and the patients. I'm glad you got here early um, because of the seating. And um, the next time you come, oh, there'll be carpet on the floor in the offices, too. Yeah. <laughs> now, wait a minute. 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 I think that Andy was telling me that he's got some gloves on sale. And here's the deal. The left-hand glove is 99 cents. The right-hand glove is a dollar. And if you buy one pair, he's going to give you one pair free. Yeah. Wow. 
that's a deal. Yes. Plus, you're saving a penny on one hand. <laughs> <laughs> and in, in case, God forbid, it ever happens again, these look great with hip boots, okay? <laughs> one and only, Andy and Donna. Are you sure? Andy and Donna. Well, it's time to move on with the show. Let's move on. No better way to move on than to introduce the greatest pianist in the world. Oh. Yes. All the way from London, England, the one and only Barbara A. Stone. Barbara A. Stone. Yes. Uh, fantasy by Chopin. Yes. But you're going to play? Yes. It was one of the last pieces he ever wrote. The last piece? One of the last pieces that Chopin wrote. Only one. One of them. Okay. Well, let me ask you before you start this. Might I kiss your hand? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> now I'm going to kiss Barbara A. Stone's hand as Babe Curry hands out the cake. <laughs> Chivalry is not dead at the Viva Nash Vegas Radio Show. And you're sure you want me to try and do the normal thing that I do when you play the piano? Uh, yes, that would be very nice. In honor of the dry carpet, now I will lie down on the wet carpet as Barbara A. Stone plays Fantasy. One of the last songs that Chopin ever wrote. Are you sure about this? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Daryl wants it. Daryl wants it. Yes, yes. He's a race car driver. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes. And he lives in Franklin. Am I right? Yes. yes. And he lives in Franklin, am I right? yes. yes. Many people now are thinking you are like the Daryl Watcher of the Grand Piano. <laughs> in two weeks, we need to hear her do Minute Waltz in 10 seconds. <laughs> the one and only Barbara A. Stone. <laughs> Wait a minute, what's that? What is that? What is that? It's a phone call. Is it a, an imaginary phone call? Hello, we'll be in Las Vegas. No, I, I can't hold on my radio. Oh, yes, I will. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Well, we really appreciate you calling. Wish you were here, too. I'll tell him. Thank you. Bye-bye. Who was that? That's Governor Haslam. <laughs> what did he say? Well, he said that, he, number one, he wanted an invitation. You didn't invite him. <laughs> I was too busy having a spat with you this week. And number two, he just wanted to congratulate your father. Join the board. Wow. You know, if you come back to you now, you'll hear more continuing ongoing sagas of the imaginary phone call. We have two phones here. Which one is the black one? What does that represent? That's special. That's special. And then the tan one is? Open line. And that number is? The number is 615-794. 1471. Don't forget to call us 24 hours a day here at Historic Handy Hardware in beautiful downtown Franklin, Tennessee, home of the Diva Nash Vegas Radio Show. The Love Shack. Well, I'm going to let this man come up here. He's going to bring some sensitive songwriting to us right now. I sing a song that George IV recorded many years ago. This is a man who lives in Fairview. That's not Franklin, but it is still part of Williamson County. And anyone who wants to leave the gallery over here at this point, feel free to and... Oh, the guitar. It's over here, Mike. Oh, the guitar's over there. <laughs> it's a special part of the show. You'll notice that now Carol Ann's necklace is on George IV, and this is, is that cubic zirconium? It is real damage, George. Real damage. I think it's from Shootastic Arts. <laughs> no, I got that thing at a little old mile. Um, uh, Fifty cent machine? Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Kelsch, who lives in Fairview. I'm going to move that microphone over to you in a second, too. Do you want to hear? <clears throat> During this song, if I run to the soundboard, don't, don't mind me. Now, this is a song that George IV recorded, I guess, back in the late 60s. I think so, yeah. I can see him looking at me right back over there. I know. The pressure is on. It's a Gordon Lightfoot to him. In the early morning rain With a dollar in my hand It's full of sand. I'm a long way from home, and I miss my loved ones so. In the early morning rain, with no place to go. Set to go, but I'm stuck here on the ground where the pavement never grows. Well, the liquor tasted good, and the women all were fast. There she goes, my friend. Rolling down at last Hear the mighty engine roll See that silver bird on high That was a good note, man. 
She's away in westward bound Far above the clouds she'll fly Where the morning rain don't fall And the sun always shine She'll be flying over my home in about six hours' time, this old airport's got me down. It's no earthly good to me. Cause I'm stuck here on the ground, as cold and drunk as I can be. Can't jump an old jet plane Like you can an old freight train So I best be on my way In the early morning So I best be on my way You can't jump an old jet plane like you can an old freight train Like you can an old freight train So I best be on my way In the early morning rain George Hamilton and Fish Thank you so much for George the Fourth was uh, one of the very first to record an entire album or more of Gordon Lightfoot songs. Did you meet Gordon Lightfoot in Canada, or where did you meet him? In Toronto, 1965. 1965. That's when we recorded that. How about that? Wow. That was a wonderful arrangement. Thank you. That was. Now, Michael. Stay right here, Michael, because the surprise is continuing. Now. I know it's hard enough singing with me. It'll be very easy to sing along with Carol Ann. Carol Ann Turney, come on out here and you will make things right. Here comes Carol Ann Turney. You know, the spontaneity of the show is... Uh, you know, uh, pardon us for that little... Um, that's just live just ready. Had there. Aren't you all having a ball? Woo! Woo! Oh, I'd say that we are blessed today. Look, where do you want to stand? You good? Now, let me tell you what it is, okay? I knew Miss Lee was going to be here today. And I was kind of thinking that she would be singing. And I figured if she would be singing, she'd be singing Sweet Nothings. And I'm sorry. Maybe even rock around the Christmas tree. It's it's still cold enough. <laughs> Give her yes, absolutely. National treasure. Where is she? Hey y'all. Okay. So I thought, well, let me pick something that's you know familiar, but not. And it turns out, well, if I knew, I'd have prepared sweet nothings for you. But whatever. We're gonna do a little song called Fool Number One. Y'all recognize that? Am I fool number one, or am I fool number two? How many other girls have been fooled by you? I suppose that the number is far from being small. So I guess that I'm the biggest fool of all. Isn't that a good song? Yeah. If I had the, had the chance, I guess I'd do it all again. I'd go down the same road, even though. new love call 
So I guess that I'm the biggest fool of all. Am I fool number one? Or am I fool number two? How many other girls have been fooled? We have a young man here who, when we told him that we were going to be doing a special tribute to George Hamilton IV, he was very excited because this guy can put a spin and a new and different spin on any song he sings and any song he writes. And now that he's teamed up with this hat that came from Hatworks down in Nashville, there is no stopping this young man. I'll put this microphone on his guitar. Now remember, babe, to stay one foot back by the microphone. But the guitar I can get close if you want to. The one and only, Babe Curry! song was written by John D. Latimer, who's also been on our show. And if you look at the columns along the side of the store, these were not hit by the flood. We're very happy. And many of the items which will go on display in the Hillbilly Museum in the back were not destroyed by the flood. How, how long did that song stay, number one? Wow, how long? How long was that song at number one? Uh, I don't know. It was uh, probably uh, by, about Christmas. I think it was... Uh, 
It, it was recorded uh, June the 18th, 1956. And by the way, uh, babe, you did a super job on that. <laughs> I was 19 years old when we recorded it. And uh, it was June the 18th at 7.30 in the evening on the campus of the University of North Carolina. And it went to number one uh, before Christmas. It was uh, a million seller in December of uh, 56. It was my uh, first million seller and my only million seller. <laughs> it was sort of like starting at the top and working down. Oh, yeah. Well, that's all I can hear. You know, this is a very magical time of our show. I think I've just given away what's about to happen. You know, magic is a very special part of music. You can hear David Spalding playing the xylophone. That means something. It's time. His name is David Scott. Scott. He does magic. That makes him the, the magic, magic Man! Man. I've only got one word. Wow. What about the power? Okay. Uh, gonna need some help on stage. Uh, if some of the cast would come up. Carolyn, you have to come on up. Babe, can you come up? William, can you come up? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, the all-star lineup, let me tell you. Yeah, I'm going to position you in certain places. Uh, Carolyn, won't you back up just a little bit? And if you three will stand right here. Like this. Like that. Don't move. What I want you to do is I want you to write down here at the top a three-digit number. Uh-oh. Okay? That might be hard. <laughs> That's good. Well, the hard part, the hard part comes a little bit later. Yeah. Be smarter than the pimp. <laughs> okay, done. Okay, go ahead and back to your normal place, William. Can you give me a three number, three digit number. Babe, would you give me a three digit number? As she adds them up, I have a question for the Riders in the Sky. Why did the cowboy get a Dotson? I don't know why. To get a long little doggy. Hey! <laughs> Y'all can use that in your act, okay? Hey! Right. Write this a little bit bigger so everybody can see it. That's fine, right? <laughs> I know where it came in. 1475 is what they added up. The numbers were really unsolicited. We didn't set this up ahead of time. Now, why did we do all this? The biggest reason is, before I got here, my wife got here, and she gave an envelope to somebody in the crowd. Would that envelope make its way up here? Thank you, Hanson. Thank you. <laughs> Both of you. Carolyn, did you take that? Okay. Now, what I did is I made a prediction a couple weeks ago, put it in the envelope, and this number just kept coming to mind what that's going to be in the envelope. So if you would open up the envelope and show everybody what the number is. Okay. This is crazy. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I'm going to get off stage and let the real panel do the work. Now, you're going to tell me how you did that. <laughs> The other stuff it's I know is tricky and stuff I don't have to do. We did not rehearse it. <laughs> All right, so where we at now? So. <laughs> Was that magic or what? You know, people have been asking me all over the store. They said, okay. Well, these are the ones who just got in. They said, so where are the riders in the sky? I said, they've already been on. You've missed half the show. And there's still another 300 people out in the parking lot. There. They are getting ready to come in and flood into the store to see Riders in the Sky. They're going to come on out here, and we may even have Woody Paul do some rope tricks. You know, he is not only in the Fiddler's Hall of Fame, but he is also in the Roper's Hall of Fame, I believe. And wait a minute. Uh, 
Woody Ball brought these boots to loan to the Hillbilly Music Museum. And you can come and see them. How about these boots? Worn by Woody Ball. These will be in the Hillbilly Music Museum, along with so many other wonderful things, including autograph album from Writers in the Sky. Would you like to bring on the guest first? Woody, I'm gonna, I met this person last night. I'm not going to give it away. This person, whoever they may be, made quite a stir at the opera last night. And Woody Paul is here to tell the story. <laughs> well, thank you, George. Thank you so much. Y'all folks having a really good time out there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice and warm down here. We're all having fun. Y'all out there listening on radio drive on down here. There's hundreds of people in the parking lot in the freezing cold. <laughs> anyway. Uh, this is a young lady that lives here in Tennessee. She's been here a couple of years, and, and I met her a couple of years ago, and I've been watching her, and she's coming along so good, and she actually worked up a song for Riders in the Sky. And we're going to bring her out here right now, Miss Amber Brooke Taylor. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad it's the Riders in the Sky. I'm the greatest. All right. Uh, me and Amber need a tall microphone. Is she taller than me or what? Is she? <laughs> Keep better looking than you, Woody, I tell you. That. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep doing it. Yeah, I think we're doing it. You can't see it, right, Amber? There you go. Here we go. That's a good one right there. Thank you. 
that folks. She is so beautiful and so pretty and sings so well. Man, she's just beautiful. Easy, Woody, easy. <laughs> you know, there's uh, one thing I saw you were doing the Arby last night that I, it blew me away. Yeah? You remember that movie, Deliverance? Yes. <laughs> Do you know anything about that movie, Deliverance? The movie ruined it? tourism in northern Georgia. <laughs> but it will bring so many smiles on the faces here. And historic handy home. We're in beautiful downtown Franklin, Tennessee. Williamson County, Tennessee. It's yeah, the Vivian Aspect of Radio. So remember, you can watch us, the archives, on NashVegas.tv. There is such a thing. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. Uh, America's never seen. So these are all plugged in? Wow, this is a I'm ready. Well, I'm glad you asked about that because uh, I asked Too Slim how to prepare for this. Yes. I asked him to work up a big solo on the beautiful antique base of this. Except you, except, except you said face. Face? <laughs> you said, he didn't say You that. said, play that beautiful antique oh, face of yours. <laughs> so I worked up a big solo on my face, and I will now perform the theme from Bonanza on the human face, the world's second oldest instrument. <laughs> For the show, Miss Carol Ann Turney, she said to me she just had to come out and talk to you all and possibly sing our state theme song. Do you mind? I don't mind. Of course not. It's I don't mind. mind. Carol Ann Turney with Riders in the Sky. And now, Carol Ann. Oh, we just made a up. Is Brenda this still is here? Is she back in the hatchet department no, there? Is that, right? is that right? One thing I've learned this to do, when Carol Ann tells you to do something, you better do it. That's one thing I've learned. <laughs> That's funny, it's Carol Ann. Oh, Carol Ann. That's <laughs> her too. That's it. <laughs> In my world, people would wear name tags. <laughs> do you sell name tags here at Handy Hardware? Yes. We got them. Come on down. We can get them. Um, this was a requested this morning. What is your name, you sweet Chuck. granny thing? Chuck. <laughs> And, and then I just, um, this is just shameless, shameless self-promotion. So, You're in the welcome, right town. welcome to my dream. <laughs> I love it. I was dancing with my darling 
to the Tennessee walls when an old friend I happened to see. I introduced her to my loved one and while they were dancing my friend stole my sweetheart from me. I remember the night in the Tennessee walls Now I know just how much I have lost Yes, I lost my Society child. I am a blessed hillbilly society child. She is blessed. You know, right as this guy, you probably can't see me, but I'm down here on the floor. I see that. I see down there, George. Here's my question. It's the Brenda Lee look. It is the Brenda Lee. Is it wet down there? Have you had a good time or what? Oh yeah. We've had a great time. This Could you all do just one more song? I know it's asking a lot, but you've got this place spellbound and they're gonna be throwing all kinds I'm of electrical tape in the air if you don't play one more song before the well, we had a, a special request, as many people know. We uh, were lucky enough to get a call from Pixar Motion Pictures Woo! a few years ago to sing the song Woody's Roundup in the movie Toy Story 2. That's right. That's right. That was a nice deal for us. Yeah. It brought us to where we are today. Andy Hardware. Andy Hardware. <laughs> 731 Columbia Avenue, Franklin, Tennessee. Just another step toward the handy hardware. I know. And, and Ranger Doug is right, folks, because not doing another song would be the easy way, but, but it, it wouldn't be the cowboy way. <laughs> that led to a couple of Grammy Awards. Yes, indeed. Or nominations and, and both albums won Grammys. Two Grammys, folks! Yeah. Yeah. Three, four! Oh, 
she's Jessie, the yodeling cowgirl. I'll tell you what, this has been a very special time for us. Ben Curry, can you come up on stage? And anybody who wants to join us during this part of the show. This is one of my favorite songs. Well, it was one of my favorite songs until I heard The Riders in the Sky. Yeah. You know, it looks like the sun is coming out and the snow has gone away. But they say, maybe tomorrow afternoon, Maybe Monday, we'll have another blizzard here in beautiful downtown Franklin, Tennessee. And remember, if there is a blizzard, you can come and get some road salt here at Handy Hardware. And also, when the summertime comes, you know, love is a burning thing. So if you plan on having a cookout or maybe leaving something too long on the stove, be sure to stop by Handy Hardware if you're planning on falling in love because it's a burning thing and you'll need the latest in fire protection equipment that they have right here at Historic Handy Hardware. I'm very emotional because this, of course, is towards the fourth, 54th anniversary with the Opry. And this, of course, is the day that Brenda Lee came to Handy Hardware. I'm going to start to cry during this song. It's only because I know that the idol of American youth is here, the one and only Ranger Doug. <laughs> Two slam on the bass over here. Where's this? <laughs> Joey, the polka king, right over here. <laughs> and a man who brought his boots to put on loan to the Hillbilly Music Museum a resident of Williamson County, very near Franklin, a man who knew Sam and Kirk McGee, a man who actually is a nuclear physicist, the one and only Woody Pa. <laughs> King of the Cowboy Theory. And of course, if everybody would sing along with me, a man we've come to like to call, a man of constellation, David Spalding Jr. He is a man of constellation. 
constant leisure. Don't do today what you can put off for tomorrow. Amen. Yeah. Well, we will not put this off till tomorrow because we also have some things from Billy Grammer that will be back here in the Hillbilly Music Museum. You see, all of your favorite country stars wind up here at Handy Harbor. So be sure to come back in two weeks for more. We'll probably not be able to eclipse this show, but maybe we'll be able to eclipse my rendition today of Crawdad Hole. So sing along with us. Put your hands together. Well, you get loud, I get cold, honey. Honey, you get loud, I get cold, babe. Hey, you get loud, I get cold, we go down and draw that hole, honey. Baby, my solo. Thank you.